that my husband and Eddie Martin and I, we would go the opposite direction. And everybody thought we were going fishing, but we weren't. Eddie knew where there was an oyster bed. And we would come back with a bunch of oysters and people would come by and they'd say, yeah, we thought y'all were going fishing, but we didn't. But we didn't want to give up where the oyster bed was. They were summer oysters. And then we had Eddie, Mc no, Walter McGarry and his wife and family lived at the cottages and he had a shrimp boat and he used to bring shrimp in. But then later on, he took his daughter out and she fell off the boat and he jumped to rescue her and he kept his boots on. We lost both of them. But they were there with us in that cottage. Where else do I cut it off? Can you cut this out when I don't know what to say? No, well, sure. Well, actually, we'll cut that out later when we edit everything. Is but, he taking a picture the whole time I talk? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. But it's, uh, it, he's been taking a picture since you walked in the door and it hasn't hurt a bit, has it? I want to edit the pictures. Okay. We can arrange <laughs> that. I, I hope you have a big floor where I can cut it all out. I've taken care of the pictures. <laughs> We have a giant floor we can cut it all out, and this man is an expert. He studied to become a cameraman, so that's what he's doing. Do you remember the first time you saw this house or came into it? Well, it was before I was married. Mm -hmm. But see, at my age, I, you forget the years. We were married in 41, I think, so I was in this house probably in 39 and 40. Very, very early on in its history. Well, they still have the old board causeway where you could drive so far, but if you met a car, you had to drive out and stop. And there was one ferry, I think, at that time. And sometimes you sat and sit all the time when it went back and forth. Oh, and another thing, uh, Eddie Martin and my husband and I, we used to go across where the lighthouse is and we would flounder at nighttime. And I thought that was something that we caught. What did we call those stone crabs that have yep. one big crab, one big leg? We would get those over there and bring them back because it was, but we would flounder over there. And that island now is owned by Charles Butt, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I was worked at Charles Butt's, H.E. Butt, for one whole year, I was their bookkeeper, the only bookkeeper, well, no, check writer. I was the only person that wrote checks for AT Butt. And their office was out on Highway 44. But I wrote checks for everybody that worked for them. And at one time I had 14 Jose Trovitos on the same <laughs> payroll because everybody that worked in the fields, in the valley, and every year they came, they had, they changed their social security number. And I found that out. So at one time I had to talk to the place, wherever they keep social Washington DC, to figure out how come that the old farmers down there, every time they got wet back to come over, they gave them a different social security number. And every year there was so many Jose trophies. <laughs> but I wrote every, every one that got a paycheck, I wrote it. And the machine was this big, it had 79 keys, and I had a thing in the back that was 18 by 36. And that was, that was the way the thing was. And that was the time of stamps during the war. Those little bit of stamps, we didn't count them, you weighed them. But that's... Too many to count. Well, yeah, it came from all the stores, but you had to you had to put in a weight amount. You had to, somehow or another it's supposed to balance. But I just wrote the text. I didn't care whether that, the balance was the bookkeeper made any difference or not. But we had the bakery out there. We had the ice cream factory, and when the bananas were too ripe to go to the stores, they brought it to the ice cream factory, and we made banana ice cream and put several silver columns in it. 
made it right there. Best ice cream on the market was there for the down and nut ice cream. And they just pulled a train up there and unloaded them right off the train. Big old bunches of them. But that's not, that's what's corpus. That has nothing to do with it. What has a lot to do with here? Uh, so at the same time you were working for HEB, which was the biggest grocery, or second biggest over there, your family ran the only grocery store in town here. Yeah. Did you ever work there? No, I never did work for Bobby. Mm -hmm. Did your husband ever come back and go to work for his family here? No, he, he, was in, he was in the fire department 46 years and one month, from his 19th birthday till, <clears throat> till he was 65. And he died a month, he died the 29th of September. His birthday was August the 18th. He was nine years and five days older than I was. He worked at the store, at the Galding store, from the day he got to town. With until, them, till he was 19. Till he was 19. What did he do? Well, he, he that's why I was telling you, he hauled the groceries from, he would leave here and go down the beach, and then he would go to Carpus to get the groceries and come back. And during the hurricanes, he stayed in the store to take the groceries off the bottom shelf, and if the water came up high enough, he had to open the trap doors to keep the building from floating or whatever. That was his job. And Bob and Mary stayed at their place and in the back of their house, they had it was built like a TV out of telephone poles. And it had up in the middle it had a straight pole up with semen. And they would go in there during the hurricane. And that's where they stayed. But my husband stayed in the grocery store to take the groceries off the bottom of the shelf so that it wouldn't get wet and put them up. And then or open the trap doors. And that was his job. But then when he went to the in the fire department. That was supposed to be Dick Goldick's job, but he didn't show up. So they put my husband in there and he got the job and that's where he stayed all of his life. That was outside being in the service. Became his career. Mm -hmm. The Goldings kept running the store after he left? Yes. And uh, I think it was after Bob died, Mary Goldings cousin. Now, I don't know whether Sam was the cousin or B. But Sam and B. Allen took over the grocery store. Now that was Mary Golding's cousin. But I don't know whether it was Sam or B. And I don't know exactly the day Bob died. We get that. And I don't know exactly when Kate oh, Ruth died either. We called her sister. Now, sister's kids are, they're, they're not living. Kate died, Carl died, and Elizabeth died, so there's none of that family. And Ray never had any children. I don't know where Ross's kids are. I, it's it's not important. The, this store was, the Galding store was one of the most important things in town. Yeah. Did they, uh, they give people credit and make them yes. out of cash? Yes. Uh, all winter time, he, he gave them credit. And then when fishing time came again, he just kept a chart of it. And that, then they paid him back. But at, at that time, before we was married, I can remember coming to the island with my husband. And we went to some people's houses, but they didn't have a floor in the house. It was just like an open garage. And everybody had metal beds. It was just one big room. And they slept on metal beds. They had a stove in there where they cooked on. But all their clothes was hanging on the walls around. Now I wasn't in too many of the houses. And then I don't know Eddie's mother's name because they always called her Old Eddie Martin. But evidently she was still pretty young, but that was what the way they referred to. But I don't even remember all of their things. But at one time when Eddie, now I don't know how old my kids were, and it was after a hurricane, and there was a boat on the 
road that they have now going out, but of course that wasn't the road that, that was turned upside down, and that's where Eddie lived. He had a car seat in the back where he would sleep on a car seat in the front, and he'd gone to somebody's house, I don't know who, but he had a, plugged into their house somehow, and he buried the light, had one light bulb in the middle. But that's where Eddie left, and we used to go in visit him and we sat on that upside down boat because he was the best friend that we had on the island. We were friends good enough because when I had Ralph, named him Ralph Edward after Eddie Martin, his name was Edward. So. You spent a lot of time with Eddie Martin. When we were on the island, Eddie Martin was with us. We went fishing, like I said, we went fishing in a 12-foot boat, and five-horse boat. But then one time I didn't go fishing with Ralph and my husband and Eddie. And they came back and I think they evidently did a little bit more drinking than they did fishing. But they came <laughs> in with that little boat and everybody thought, oh, they caught a big fish, they caught a big fish, they were coming in. They were dragging a jug behind. <laughs> They hadn't caught any fish. They went out and they <laughs> parked somewhere probably and drank their liquor and then they came in rain. And everybody, boy, they got mad. They said, everybody was standing there on waiting to see what big fish they brought in. They didn't bring one. And then one of the friends just took me over to on the other side and we were to catch Jewfish. Okay? A Jewfish it's not a Jewfish. A Jewfish is a June fish. And they call them a Jew, Jewfish because they were so hard to skin. Well, I went over there and sat for hours one day because you just sit still and put out a bait and they come and they bite and they back off bite. But I never did catch one. But I stayed out there to go catch that June fish. But, and then, I don't know. I can't really remember what all we did. Do you want to talk to Mary? If you want to take a break. Take a break. I'm, okay. I'm, I've been rolling back and forth so he can't take a good picture of me. Okay, and cut. I didn't lock it. Before I was married, I have a picture of myself out on the pier between two tarpon. But we didn't catch them, but I just, that was before I was married and we had a picture made between the two times. We can bring some old pictures. Then later on, we came up here, that was even after my husband died, we were out on the pier fishing. That's the big shark fisherman right over there. And this day, on Father's Day, my son-in-law's son caught the biggest shark, six foot 11 inches. But at one time, we were out there, we stayed, that was when they let us stay all day and all night, slept out there. We had 27 rod and reels in the water at the same time. How big is your biggest reel? No. Yeah, Tell I've got a 12 on 12 on. 12 on something. I had a 16 or 14 on time. I mean, we had all kinds of And then when he was a kid, you used to come up, how old were you? You could talk over there, and I'll repeat it. Like 14. When you had to. 13, 14. And had a surfboard. How how big, long is your surfboard, and how old is it? Oh. It's a Copeland. So this is your son you're talking about? I bought it in 67. Yeah, huh? I bought it in 67. It's a 9 foot, 16 inch Copeland. Custom made by Copeland. And Copeland is no longer. He made them. On that, what is that, end of the Dosley Road? That was part of the by Air Arts. It's Copeland's diving ski shop now. The car that was stripped down, and we would go up and down the sand dunes, sand dunes, shooting coyotes and snakes. And this is you and your husband? And, and Bob. And Bob? Yeah. Mr. Mr. Gold. That Mr. Gold? Bob. Yeah. Okay, Bob's that stepfather. Was. His mm -hmm. uncle, who's also kind of his stepfather. Yeah. You were up in the dunes? Yeah, but that was 
My husband was his youngest brother. My husband's father and Bob's father drowned on Coal Park Pier in Corpus.